when I introduce a game-based uh, coaching philosophy or uh, talk to coaches about more game-centered drills or more task representative drills, uh, the big uh, concern is the number of repetitions. So, you know, if we're doing a 2 on 0 passing drill, let's say, you know, we're going to get lots more repetitions uh, in that drill than if we're playing, say, a game of keep away, uh, you know, or, you know, three on three, no dribble, something like that. Um, and so the concern is that we're going to miss out on all these extra repetitions. Because after all, the drills that we use, essentially that's the purpose. We isolate a skill so that we can get additional repetitions that we can't get just by playing a five on five game. Uh, the problem then, or the question, is whether or not those repetitions uh, have value and to what extent these repetitions have value. So the argument that I generally make is what causes the mistakes in the game. So when players, uh, you know, after the beginner level, so after, let's say, the first year of participation, um, are mistakes made because players don't know the proper technique of how to make a pass or how to dribble the basketball? Um, you know, are they maybe not strong enough? You know, are they throwing passes intending to hit the player in the chest, but the ball's hitting them in the foot or they're throwing it over their heads or, you know, they're missing their target by, you know, two feet to the right or two feet to the left. Uh, you know, if these are the mistakes, uh, then yeah, maybe a little bit more technique work is necessary. Uh, however, if the mistake is because, uh, you know, they chose the wrong pass to use. So maybe the situation called for a bounce pass and they tried to make an air pass. Or uh, maybe it's because they're, they're not used to making passes directly off the dribble. So they stopped and that took too much time and now the defense recovered. Or maybe they didn't make a pass fake or a ball fake against their defensive player and their defender tipped the ball. Um, or maybe they had tunnel vision on their teammate and they didn't see a help defensive player rotating into a passing lane. Uh, so to me, these are the areas that cause most mistakes. Um, and the same thing could be said for dribbling the ball. I, I don't think most mistakes in the game are made because players don't know how to bounce a basketball. I think it's either because, uh, you know, they do a poor job protecting it from a defensive player, they choose the wrong move, uh, something like that. So uh, if these are the mistakes that are made in games, and we're doing isolated drills without defense and in some cases without movement, uh, in practice to get better or to prevent these mistakes in games, I don't know that we're practicing the right thing. Um, and so to me, even though there's fewer um, actual repetitions in a, you know, a small-sided game or a keep-away game or a tag game, something like that, uh, compared to you know, an isolated drill, I think the, the repetitions are of more value because they're task representative. That is, they contain some or all of the constraints that are used in the game. So if I'm playing keep away, I may play an advantage passing game, uh, you know, something like seven on five passing or something of that nature. Uh, and so uh, it's not a game. Uh, the objective isn't to score a basket, so it is different. The goals are different. Uh, but the game retains some of those, some of the constraints that cause mistakes uh, in games passing to a moving target, uh, seeing where help defensive players are, uh, you know, having to fake against a player guarding, my, guarding the passer, um, things of this nature. So it, it retains some of the task. So if we're trying to uh, get additional repetitions, we may not get as many repetitions as if we do a 2 on 0 passing drill, but we're going to get more repetitions than if we're playing a 5-on-5 five -five game. And so that's the kind of middle ground of increasing the number of repetitions but retaining enough of the task constraints or, or the task representativeness uh, from the game that those rep repetitions become more valuable and actually have greater transfer to the game than an isolated practice. And so I don't think the question is whether or not we're getting enough repetitions. I think the question needs to be whether those repetitions have value and transfer to game performance.